Okay, um, I'm doing this uh, on, what is it, May 11th, and we've been in COVID two months now. I think it's almost exactly two months. So everybody's really sick of it, and I was sick of it, and I wasn't going to talk about it anymore. Uh, I wasn't going to talk about fear anymore, and yet something happened last night which made me realize I want to talk about fear. I want to talk about not mental fear, which I talked about before, but instinct which is more like paying attention and then following what your body knows it must do in order to survive the situation, okay? Danger, but the body knows. If you're in touch with your body, the body knows. And once you go through an experience which, which where the body handled it, then you become fearless, truly, because you know that your body will do whatever is necessary. And then you realize also, as you will see with these three stories, I'm going to tell you three dog attacks. Okay. Um, you know that um, it's not just what appears. There's, there's a multidimensional aspect to each one of these stories, as you will find out. And I think anytime you're dealing with what seems to be survival in the moment, you're dealing on a multidimensional level, not just here in 3D. Okay, so the first one was in 1989, as far as I can recall, something like that. Uh, I had a, a mentor at the time, uh, my spiritual grandmother, I called her. Her name is Catherine. Uh, if you know who Terry Tempest Williams is, it was her grandmother. And she was also my spiritual grandmother, and she had just died. And right before she died, she told Terry to tell me. She said, tell Anne to get out of her mind, get into her feelings. And I just kind of dismissed it like, oh, what a superficial remark. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take it seriously at all. Okay, until later. Okay, so then that very night when she told me that, uh, or maybe it was after she died, it must have been after she died, I had a dream, and the dream was I was walking from my yurt in Jackson Hole to the um, hot springs, or the warm springs, two miles away, and um, then I came back, and that's a normal thing for me to do is walk and then come back, but this was the dream, the dream I was walking and coming back, and so I approached, came approaching the yurt, I saw a shepherd dog, and it looked at me, and it was I don't know how many feet away, like, you know, 100 feet away. And then it charged me. And I don't mean friend, in a friendly manner. It was clearly charging me to attack me. I don't know why. Uh, I hadn't really surprised it. And when it did, in this dream, I became like, all I can say is I was like Kali. My whole body flew into a complete, um, you know, just whirling around and screaming and kicking, and the dog ran off, terrified. Okay, the next day, that morning, I go on the walk to the Warm Springs, just as the dream had predicted. I turn around, I come back, I'm not even thinking that this is the same as the dream, until I saw the dog. I've never seen this dog before, by the way. And there the dog was. So now I'm, the dog was there, and exactly as the dream had predicted, that's exactly what my body did. It just went into complete fury, twirling and kicking and screaming, and the dog ran off. And that was the most astonishing um, parallel between the dream and reality that happened only like maybe six hours after I had the dream when I had the exact thing happen to me with a dog. Okay. That's the first one. The second one came 13 years ago. And uh, the first one was a shepherd dog, by the way. The second came 13 years ago again. This time it's two dogs, okay? So now first was one dog, and now it's two dogs. Now, but I have to back up a bit and give you a little backstory to this. I was on a book tour, and I was very tired. I'd been giving workshops and presentations for two almost like a month and a half straight and I was in California on the Big Sur coast or not quite yet I was up north of that 
and I was uh, on where the Russian River meant the, went, met the sea, and I decided to take a walk on that day. And I walked towards this place where the Russian River moved into the sea, where there's a little cliff. I sat on the cliff, and finally my you know, endless constant thinking dissolved as I watched the the animals play in the in the waters and watched the, the wor birds wheel above. And I was there, I don't know how long, maybe five minutes or 15 minutes or an hour. I don't know. It was became timeless, luckily, because I really needed to let go. Okay, so then I stood up and I started walking back. And I was now completely present in my world. I was in the world, I was completely present with the beach, the ocean, which was very beautiful. The tide was going out. No one was there. No one on the beach was there. And all of a sudden I heard in my ear a feminine voice, which I have never heard before. I am clairaudient and I do hear a voice when I need to. Uh, it's usually some drastic situation, and the, but the voice up until this time had always been deep, booming, and masculine. This time it was a feminine voice, and it said, a whispered. And I was luckily, I was centered enough and quiet enough to hear it. I am with you always. And I'm kind of like, hmm, you know, it's like, well, that's weird. I kept walking. I walk all the way back. And I'm, I'm wandering, of course, because now I'm centered, I'm here. And I see the rivulets as they're going out, I see the little shells, I see the little, the little insects that are coming in and out of the sand. And then I get to the final place right before I am to go up to get to my car. And all of a sudden, a rogue wave washes, comes up from God knows where and washes up to my chest. Okay, comes, slams into my chest, slams over my body, chest high. And had I not been a Tai Chi practitioner, I probably would have been carried out to sea. But I was able to, again, trust the body. The body stood there, was able to absorb the, the onrushing of this rogue wave, which I've never experienced before or since. And it even left the keys in my shorts pocket, <laughs> this wave. I was like stunned. It even left the keys in the pocket. I get up and then I notice a sign that was there that I hadn't noticed before. And the sign said uh, something like, stay off this beach, rogue waves. <laughs> That's where I got the word rogue wave. It's from the sign actually. But that had happened to me. And so no wonder nobody was on the beach. Okay, so that's the day before. I am with you always. The next day, I'm in Big Sur. I'm going to another beach. And this time, this is a beach that lots of people are on. They have their dogs. It's great. I have a backpack with my dinner. I'm going to watch the sunset. I'm really totally prepared for this wonderful event. And, and I go further and further north from the place of entrance and uh, come and it, there's a, a cliff behind or cliff you know i don't know how many 200 feet on the other side i mean the, uh, the ocean was i don't know what the ocean was doing but it was there and i was just walking and all of a sudden i see two dogs two shepherd dogs rushing towards me and i think oh good because i've been saying hi to all the dogs and the people ever since I was there, and but they came and they, as a pack, started to attack me viciously. And once again, I went into complete Kali mode and I was just, and I had to keep them both from me. Ah! <laughs> I'll give you an even fuller demonstration at the end of how Kali works through my body. And and I had to keep this up for minutes on end. I mean, and the, the two women, the two young girls whose dogs they were, finally got there. But before they got there, and here's the astonishing thing, there were five men, five young men, who came out of nowhere, and they created a wall between me and those two dogs. I was, I was right almost at the ocean, and, and, the, and then there was the, the wall of men 
and the two dogs. Where did they come from? And then they melted out after it was over. And it was like, huh? And they find, the women finally came up and, um, you know, I'm so sorry, my dogs, you know, they've been, they've been vaccinated, you know, they had their rabies shot and so forth. But one of them had ripped a big hole in my, in my leg. And this was Labor Day weekend, so I had to go and travel an hour on very windy roads at sunset up to whatever the town is right north of there, north of Big Sur, to find a place that would, uh, um, you know, at least treat this wound, uh, which might have to have stitches and so forth. And that, I think, was one of the loneliest journeys of my life, being alone on that road, completely exhausted. And of course, when you go through something like that, your adrenals are completely shot. You are gone. There is nothing left. But I still had to somehow make it on this winding road and knowing that on my way back to the motel, I would be on in a dark road and on Labor Day weekend, who knows what drunks would be on the road, but I still had to do it. So I get up there and it took me a while, but I finally found a place. They treated me, they, they um, gave me penicil a penicillin, which I would take at, at a time like this. <laughs> I went to CVS. As I pull up to CVS, and I'm feeling very sorry for myself, by the way, this whole time. Pull up to CVS. And right next to me, in a car, an old beater car, is a woman and her child. And clearly they're homeless and they're trying to sleep in a parking lot, in an empty parking lot of CVS, because it's like nine o'clock at night now. And that absolutely woke me up and gave me a completely different perspective. And from that moment on, I was fine. <laughs> I picked up my prescription and I was able to get back with no trouble. I just had to have that that comparison between my problems, which are nothing compared to this woman's and what she was dealing with on a daily basis. Okay, then 10 years ago, three dogs, this time pit bulls, okay? Now the story here is I was with two little uh, Coton de Tulier dogs, which one of them was mine, named Emma, and the other was uh, Sparky, not Sparky, yeah, Sparky, uh, my sister's, who's now, it was her dog, and she was visiting, but she had slept in, so the two of us, the do me and the two dogs, went down to Griffey Lake uh, Dam to take our walk in the woods, and we're starting up this little uh, uh, wooden stairway, and um, all of a sudden, three pit bulls uh, just materialize out of the woods and they come and they and they go after Sparky they go after Sparky and so I pick up it's like I pick up Sparky and just become Kali again just completely you know just keeping them from the dog and the dog is biting me because he's so French she's so frantic and then they go after Emma my dog so I put Sparky down, Sparky runs off, I go after, they go after Emma, and the same thing happens, you know, so I, I grabbed Emma, I mean, this is complete without fear, this is just instinct, this is just instinct survival operating, and now it's not just for my, it isn't for myself, it's for my dogs, and so they did the same thing, this took probably 10 minutes altogether. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but it seemed like it's, it was very long, it was much longer than the other two, that I was doing this um, complete um, vociferous fury against these three dogs, these pit bulls who I knew, you know, poor pit bulls, I don't want to give them a bad name, but I knew that if they grab, they were able to grab on, they wouldn't let go, and so I was, it was very key that I not let them grab on, and one of them did bite Emma and she almost they almost punctured her lung so Emma was damaged and so was I just with my face with my dogs finally the owner shows up and the owner um, uh, what do you call it the owner um, is clutching his heart saying I think I'm having a heart attack <laughs> I, 
I don't know whether he was having a heart attack because of what was happening there, or that's why he was late or whatever. But finally, he was able to get his dogs and take them to the parking lot, which was a couple blocks away. And then that whole afternoon, we searched for um, her dog and finally found the dog. The next day was at the pound because the pound had picked her up. Now, what's really important about this one is that I looked afterwards, I looked down and I had instinctively removed my clogs, or not clogs, what are they called? Um, the things that you can just slip on and off. The crocs. My crocs. And they were st standing there at the edge, just like I had gone and put them there. You know, it was like I had stepped out of my crocs in order to have the sure-footedness necessary on this uneven ground to actually deal with these dogs without injury. And um, that's what happened. It, that one, that particular attack took me two months to recover from. Uh, not, not the, um, what do you call it, not the bites, but the adrenaline, the fact that it had been so drained. Um, it took me two months to come back. And so that was 10 years ago, so I was 67 years old at the time. Um, and ever since then, by the way, the, the Sparky, uh, whenever I go back, whenever I'm in Seattle, uh, Sparky knows me very well and is extremely grateful. And even when Mary, who, who is dead now, she died uh, a while ago of cancer, but when, when Mary would talk about this, she told me that Sparky would come up and sit by her and look at her the whole time she was talking about it. So, of course, dogs really do remember. So that's the, um, that's the experience of, you know, the other kind of thing that we think of as fear, but I think it's more like a being paying attention, being attuned to your body, and going with whatever the moment requires. And with dog attacks, that is what is required. Um, and I wasn't, and I'm not afraid of dogs. I wasn't afraid of dogs before. I'm not afraid of dogs afterwards. It did not leave any kind of a horrifying residue of PTSD, probably because my body completely responded to the situation. And I think with this COVID, you know, one, the, the, there's the fear of death, which of course is endemic in our culture. And then there's the fear of our own bodies. We are not in tune with our bodies. We need to learn how to be in tune with our bodies because our bodies are absolutely, they know more than we do about how to respond to the present moment. So that's it. And now I shall demonstrate for you what I was like, why the dogs were terrified. Okay, here we go. Dog attack. <laughs> The dog when I had the dog mm -hmm. the third time to pick up shadow it's okay and that was it and that was it Wow yeah All right. and so I always know how to handle it I don't even know how I know but my body knows and there's all sorts of situations where your body knows exactly the response required. It's not usually this, obviously. But with a dog attack, yeah. <laughs>